Hello and welcome back to the channel for another Doctor Who collection update, this time for June 2022. We've got a lot of stuff to get through this month, obviously magazines as ever, but also a comic as well, uh, we've got audiobooks, a Blu-ray box set, figures and lots of other bits and pieces besides. So without further ado, let's just get straight into it. So as ever, we begin with Doctor Who magazine. Uh, this is issue 579, obviously came out about a week or so ago. And it has featured on the channel already, actually, because uh, I discussed this with, with Miles in our little RTD uh, news update thing we did, uh, because of this fantastic article inside from the man himself, all about what he's got planned and, and what's been going on, the filming and stuff. Uh, a really fantastic article. But apart from that, we've also got your usual, uh, you know, highlights from Doctor Who magazine. We've got an interview with... James Moran and Ronan Monroe to tie in with the new uh, Target novelizations of Ease of Light and Faz of Pompeii. Uh, there's an interview with Ella Watts and Gina Dawson to do with Redacted, the, uh, the podcast series that's been going on recently. Uh, there's a nice little comic story as well, actually, with uh, Dan and, and then the 30th Doctor and Yaz, and Dan has these little sunglasses that like, show him premonitions of the future and stuff. It's mad, it's bonkers, it's great. Um, but yeah, I've sort of read... Probably about half, two thirds of this need to get stuck into it after I finish recording this, really, and finish it off. Um, but yeah, just a great issue, you know, as ever. And I think next month, actually, uh, yeah, it's going to be like a sort of Dark Movies Part 2. Because you know, obviously we had some Dark Movies stuff in the previous issue. Uh, but next month we're going to get some stuff, particularly about the second movie, I think. Because obviously in the last issue as well, we had all the stuff about Shooter Gatwa and all that stuff to fit in as well. So uh, yeah, it's good to know that we're going to be getting some more Dalek movie stuff uh, next month. We also have this, uh, Doctor Who Chronicles 1967, so the fifth uh, Chronicles issue in the, the range that's been going about a year or so now. Uh, it's a great range, uh, you know, really great book scenes. These have sort of overtaken the essential Doctor Who book scenes that were going for many years, and now we get these instead, which, which are fantastic. They're all based around a single year in Doctor Who history. Um, they're always ridiculously hard to get hold of. Uh, I checked loads of W. H. Smiths just in the vicinity of various places I was going, you know, around the time that this was published and none of them had it but uh, luckily uh, Forbidden Planet uh, International in Liverpool ended up delivering the goods I went in there just to check for basically whatever they had on the shelves really and you'll be seeing some of those items uh, a bit later in the video but yeah just out of the corner of my eye I sort of glimpsed these uh, just like the spines of them because they had them on a bookshelf basically like all the comics and stuff so I was looking at the comics and I saw this and was like, oh my god, I've actually seen one of these out in the wild. Uh, because, yeah, usually you have to resort to either getting them, you know, on the Panini website and getting them delivered, or waiting, like, months for them to eventually be circulated properly in WH Smith. Which is a real shame, because, like I say, they are fantastic pieces. Uh, but, yeah, I haven't actually read any of this yet. Um, I've been preoccupied with the other Doxy Magazine issue, really, and just other stuff. Um, but, yeah, definitely sort of saving this... You know, for the summer, summer holidays, let's uh, let's crack it open then and, and sort of immerse myself in 1967. Because obviously, you know, unlike the previous Chronicles issue, which was based around 2007, uh, it's not an era that I can get like immediately nostalgic about because I wasn't there in 1967. So it's more a case of finding some time to like properly delve into this and immerse myself in that era. So very much looking forward to getting stuck into this, and I can definitely recommend picking it up if you do in fact see it in the shops. Because like I say, these are not the easiest things to get hold of. Next up, in a first for these collection updates actually, we have a Doctor Who themed comic. Uh, it's from Titan Comics, the fourth Doctor volume, I believe it's the only fourth Doctor volume they ever did, Gaze of the Medusa. Now this, I saw basically in Forbidden Planet in London, the big mega store, uh, when I was there for the BFI Dalek screening, the Dalek movie screening, which I did a video about, go and check it out if you haven't already, and stay tuned for the vlog on Oscar's channel, Mono Supreme. But yeah, basically we sort of decided to go over to Forbidden Planet just to see what they had on offer, not expecting very much. Uh, and I came away with this in the end because basically they have loads and loads of these comic volumes uh, just on sale for like a quid, two quid, three quid. It's absolutely mad. Uh, of course, you'll, you'll know this if you've watched my uh, previous video about that event because I mentioned it there as well. Uh, but yeah, I came away with this because... There were some other comics there, like some other volumes and stuff, which I think I already own, because I got like the UK 
uh, reprints comic thing they did, like in Dead Witch Smiths. I got that back in the day. It's so, like all the Tenth Doctor strips, Eleventh Doctor ones, etc. Uh, but but also just with those, that they're so confusing as well, like the numbering system and the color coding and everything. It's like you know, Tenth Doctor Year Two Volume Twenty Seven or whatever. It is mad. So I thought I'm gonna go and get something that's like self-contained, like I can actually just read and everything. Uh, so I went for the Fourth Doctor Volume, which uh, once again I haven't actually got stuck into yet. Um, but it does look you know pretty good to be fair. Uh, just to show you briefly if I can some of the artwork and stuff I mean yeah it looks you know it looks good quality um, don't know anything about it really particularly it looks kind of I suppose vaguely sort of reminiscent of stories like horror fang rock and that sort of aesthetic that gothic aesthetic um, so yeah I'm looking forward to getting stuck into this really eventually you know at, at some point uh, and yeah for, for two quid you, you can't go wrong so you know once again if you are near Film Planet in London and particularly you're, you're a fan of your Doctor Who comics and you don't own these already uh, go and check it out because they have like, the hardback versions they have some paperback ones as well and uh, yeah like I say you, you can't go wrong for the prices that they have them for they are practically giving them away now also while I was in London, I picked up uh, this, the Doctor Who and the Daleks uh, 4K brand new collector's edition, of course, of the first Peter Cushing film, which they had on sale on the day, like 24 hours before its official release date. And uh, yeah, basically at the moment they sort of mentioned they had it on sale there and then I was like, right, okay, I, I wasn't planning to buy this straight away necessarily, but now you've said that, you've twisted my arm, I've got to go and get it, you know, because it, it's just, you know, it's nice to have picked up at that event for, for the Dalek films, of course. You'll know that as well if, if you've watched my video about, uh, about that event. Uh, but yeah, it's a really special piece, this. It's so, so nice. I mean, the cover artwork is fantastic. I think it really sort of represents the film in a way that the previous DVD and Blu-ray release and stuff haven't necessarily done. Uh, the box as well is, is very nice. It's a very unique presentation because you basically get the sort of... Uh, box which has like a slide off cover. It's not like a sort of slip on Dan Spire kind of thing. You actually get this this cover that comes off here, uh, like so. Get a little uh, quotes on the inside from Peter Cushing's Doctor Who, and then very brief just go through some of the contents in here. I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to actually get these bits out, uh, but we get this little collectible mini book, uh, which is like a sampler from a book that's coming out in September, I think, about the two Dalek films. Uh, very, very nice stuff indeed. Lots of photos and stuff inside there. Uh, let's just stick that in the other half of the case. Then, uh, oh yeah, there we've got the um, the sticker that came on the front of this because I, I thought I'd keep that because I, I keep things like that these days just because you know you might as well. Uh, it, it's part of the box set, you know. Why throw it away? You know, it, it's part of the box set. So got that as well. Next up, we have the Clex Edition booklet, uh, which which came in the box set as well. So that's got like write-ups and essays and stuff, I think, and, and photos about the films as well. Very, very nice indeed. Um, also as well for the packaging, we've got this little bit which came on the outside, basically, when it was in the uh, the, the cling filming wrap, whatever it is. Um, the little bit of paper that tells you what's on it, um, which again, people might have thrown away, but I thought I'd keep. We've got uh, two uh, sort of lovely colour posters. I mean, my God, I might as well. Show you them in the flesh, so there we go. Is it gonna fit in the frame? Not really, but we've got the uh, the original uh, Dalek film uh, poster from when, from when the first film came out. We have also got then this brand new artwork, which also looks very, very lovely indeed. Um, there we go, again, it doesn't quite fit in frame, but you get the gist. Um, yeah, really, really nice stuff there with Peter Cushing and all the, the characters and the Daleks uh, from that first film. You get some postcards as well. Uh, let's get those those out. Um, slightly curiously, they are in black and white, but you know what can you do? So um, we get like one there of, of uh, Ian and Barbara and Thals. We get some Thals there. We get uh, Roberta Toby and some Dalek from one of my favourite shot we get included here, and also uh, a slightly weird shot of, of the Daleks in their control room there. I mean, I don't know whether they. Maybe just don't have like you know proper high quality uh, HD shots of of the movie and stuff. Um, I don't know whether they exist or not because you'd have thought that they would include like you know color ones in this box set, but hey, who knows? And then of course we get, last but not least, the, uh, the discs themselves, uh, which is presented in this like little little thing here. And then you also uh, finally get this little collector's coin which is a sort of very unique uh, thing to include not something you get in every Doctor Who DVD or, or Blu-ray release um, 
but it's a very welcome little inclusion with some Daleks on one side and uh, the Thalgai on the other. Um, so yeah, that is the box set of Doctor Who and the Daleks. So yes, this is a fantastic release of the first Dalek film, the definitive way to own it, I would say, you know, with all these little bits and pieces included as well, you know, your booklets, postcards, poster, your little coin as well. It's a really special package. Um, it has a hefty price tag, that's the only thing about this. But yeah, I don't suppose it's gonna be going down in price anytime soon because it is limited edition, so you you know you kind of either have to have to go for it or, or not really. I mean, there is a steelbook release as well to consider. You know, if you want something a little bit cheaper, that retails at like thirty quid, I think, and that might go down in price or maybe stick around for longer. I'm not quite sure, but yes, I'm very very pleased I got this. No regrets whatsoever, and I'm very much looking forward to getting hold of the second Dalek movie in this format uh, when it comes out in a couple of weeks. Next up, we have another first for the collection updates, uh, and for the collection as a whole, actually, because I've never ever got these before, never bothered with them. Um, but yeah, basically, they are three of the BBC audiobooks that, that are released, like audiobook readings of the novels, the new series novels. Um, so here we have three 13th Doctor titles, basically. So Combat Magics, there by Steve Cole, or by Amanda McGill. We have Molten Hearts by Una McCormack, or by Dan Starkey, obviously, uh, Strax there. And then Good Doctor uh, by Doctor Who Redacted uh, author Judah Dawson, read by Claire Corbett. Um, so, yeah, you might be wondering why I picked these up, why it's been that sort of about turn, really, in terms of me suddenly being interested in these and, and picking them up. Um, but, yeah, basically, the, the reason is that Big Finish had a load of them just going really, really cheap. Um, so I thought I'd be stupid not to pick something up from that sale. They had, like, single audiobooks going for... I don't know, like three quid plus postage, like ridiculously cheap prices. Uh, and these were all, like, all in a bundle for nine quid, I think, plus postage. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to go for these because I don't own the, 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 the like physical uh, novels of these already, of, of these books. So I thought, yeah, I, I'll get these instead and, and maybe experience them for the first time uh, in this audiobook medium, uh, which would be a first. But uh, yeah, I mean, they are like, what? five CDs long these and like five or six hours long in terms of length so you know it's a long haul I mean all these together is like what 15 hours 18 hours something like that something ridiculous um but yeah that's my plan sort of eventually get around to like ripping the the CDs of these onto my phone or whatever or uh, computer just to listen to uh, it might take a while because like I say there are five CDs in each one uh, and you don't get a download copy sadly with, with these on the Big Finish website like I do for other releases. So uh, yeah, uh, eventually I'll get around to that, you know, perhaps for some long car journeys over the summer or whatever. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm happy to have, have picked these up. And do stay tuned actually for more sales like this in the future because there was another one just of the day on the Big Finish uh, website and the socials and stuff where they, they sort of seem to like have come into uh, possession of, of a load of these from BBC Audio Books or whatever the company is, BBC Studios, I don't know. Um, yeah, they had some other stuff. So I actually uh, went for another title in that other sale. Uh, one that is, is quite uh, topical for Doctor Who at the moment in terms of the TV series. But uh, yeah, you'll have to wait until next month's collection to find out which one that was. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned uh, for, for those sales because they, they are really good if, if you didn't know about them. And yeah, you can, you can definitely pick up a bargain or two. Um, so, so do keep an eye out for those sales and big finish socials and stuff uh, if you are interested in your Doctor Who audiobooks. Next up, we have a staple of these collection updates, uh, is of course the 5 inch figure section, where I give you an update on where I'm at with my 5 inch figure collection and filling in the gaps and stuff. Uh, because, yeah, as you'll know, if you're a regular viewer of these collection updates, I have been very, very lucky over the past year or so to add lots of exciting uh, figures, particularly from the classic series, that I missed out on back in the day to my collection. And this month has been no exception. So first of all, we have a fantastic figure here, uh, the Crinoid from the Seeds of Doom. I mean, it's just such a, a great figure, so big, bulky, vibrant with all these colours on it as well, the shades of green. Now I did of course add the uh, the Axon creature to my collection around about a year or so ago actually, or maybe slightly less than that. Um, but yeah, that was courtesy of Frank Jennings, and this has come courtesy of, uh, of Mark. Uh, or the Timeless Whovian over on YouTube. There'll be a link to his channel in the video description, as ever, for, for anyone that helps me out uh, with these figures and with these collection notes and things. Um, but yeah, I'm just a fantastic figure. Love him so much. Um, what what a striking figure, and what a, a difference he makes to the shelves as well. You know, seeing this guy up there with all the other fourth Doctor stuff. Because as well, this is the last sort of unique uh, classic
Classic Series monster that I needed for the collection. Everything else now is just Daleks and Cybermen, basically, and the odd Davros as well. Um, so it's really great to, to have finally got hold of, of, of this guy. Uh, really, really fantastic figure. And as well as that crinoid, Mark also sent me the various accessories which came with it in the Seeds of Doom set, which I was also missing. So we've got the open and closed uh, crinoid seed pods, we've got the fourth doctor's cutlass or sword, whatever you want to call it, and as well actually the odd one out there in the middle, uh, the DMAC gun from the Invasion of Time, which again I was missing from my collection because I have like the Santaran figure from that set, so I have the Leela figure from that set, but I bought them loose or from various different sources, so I don't have the accessory which came with them. So great to have that at long last, and I should add as well actually that all these bits and pieces came from Ireland, because Mark lives over in Ireland, uh, so much like the, the Sea Devils set, which I got a couple of months ago, uh, yeah, they've sort of travelled internationally to, to get here onto the shelf, into the collection, so uh, yeah, that makes it all, all the more special really. And then we also have this fantastic figure of the first Doctor. Uh, the last first Doctor variant I needed, apart from the, the black and white one, which, to be honest, it isn't at the top of my list of priorities at the moment. Uh, but yeah, this came courtesy of Mester the Magnificent, uh, once again, a name which you'll no doubt be familiar with if you've been watching these collection updates for a while now. Uh, we actually met Mestor, me and Miles, when we went to the Liverpool uh, Worlds of Wonder exhibition uh, a month or so ago. And he actually very kindly gifted this to me, and he gifted Miles a, a New Adventures uh, book as well. So, yeah, that was a lovely surprise. Thank you so much uh, for that, Mestor. And, uh, yeah, you'll be hearing from Mestor and Mark as well, actually, uh, next month's collection update as well, because they've, they've both sold me some other bits and pieces uh, since I got hold of, of these two bits. So, yeah, do stay tuned uh, for those in July's collection updates. And as we move towards the end of this month's collection updates, we have a few miscellaneous bits and pieces. And so first of all, these postcards which I picked up in the shop at Worlds of Wonder, uh, the brand new Doctor Who exhibition over at the World Museum in Liverpool. Uh, yeah, they had quite a lot of stuff on offer actually in that shop. Uh, lots of sort of purpose uh, design, especially commissioned stuff on offer. Uh, most of the artwork you'll be seeing on these postcards is also available on like prints and t-shirts and notebooks and you name it. They also had quite an eclectic mix of other bits and pieces as well from yesteryear. Uh, things like the Corgi 3-pack of die casts or like a, a Dalek sex swim bag and mad stuff like that. And some more recent stuff with quite a high markup unfortunately. I uh, think like the Bubble Dalek 4-pack for 30 quid. Sonic Screwdriver like Jody Sonic for like, 20 quid. The 5-inch figure of Jody for 20 quid. Not great prices there, uh, but I did want to pick up a couple of bits and pieces including all of the postcards I had on offer. Uh, so this one first has the, the logo for the museum on it. We then have uh, this design here with the TARDIS made up of various phrases I suppose to do with science. Um, we've also got this one of, of the inside of a Dalek with the nicest one of all these little postcards to be honest. A lovely little illustration there. Uh, this one here is a, uh, I'm going to right way up, a slightly sort of a uh, puzzling floor plan of a various different TARDIS console room. I think it may be like a, a mishmash of different ones, like different sections of the, the pizza, I suppose, uh, represent different uh, TARDIS console rooms. And finally, this one here, uh, life is stranger than you think. Again, with one of those little phrases and a little graphic uh, of the TARDIS and some Gallifreyan text. Then they also had this slightly bigger postcard, A5 size, about twice the size of the other ones, uh, with the Gallifreyan alphabet written on it. Now, I'm not sure what the source is for this, or whether it's accurate, or what it's meant to be accurate to, uh, but hey, it looks cool nevertheless, you know, regardless. And so, yeah, I thought I'd get myself one of those as well. I also really wanted to get hold of a flyer for the museum, just to have as, as like a souvenir, uh, but I couldn't find any in the museum itself. But I did find this What's On booklet for all of the museums in Liverpool. It's a What's On booklet for the summer of this year, and if we just go to the, the second or third page somewhere, and there we go, there's a lovely spread about Worlds of Wonder. So obviously, you know, it would have been nice to have a proper sort of dedicated flyer. I'm not sure whether they do exist or not, uh, but yeah, either way, it's it's nice to have, have this as a nice alternative uh, because, you know, like I say, I've got stuff like this for the experience as well, like leaflets and stuff. It's just nice to have a little souvenir uh, so you can remember these exhibitions when they're no longer around. I also picked up this pen from Worlds of Wonder, uh, mainly for nostalgic reasons, really, if nothing else, because for years I've had this pen over here from the experience, obviously back in Cardiff, from back in the day. 
Uh, it's still going strong to this day, actually, this pen, and I'm not quite sure how it's managed to last so long. Uh, but yeah, I still use it every month to do the Doctor Who magazine crossword, which is fun. Uh, so yeah, it's just one of those those things, really. A, a Doctor Who pen, one of those novelty items that doesn't come around very often, and I wanted to get one from this exhibition, and to go with with the one from the, the experience as well, to have, have little reminders of, uh, of two of the best Doctor exhibitions, really. Um, so yeah, Doctor Who pen. There we go. And speaking of free souvenirs from Doctor exhibitions and events, we do of course also have this postcard given away free at the BFI a Dark Movies Double Bill screening with this lovely artwork on the front from those brand new collector's edition releases. And we also have the free leaflets uh, they always do for these Doctor Who BFI screenings. So one here for the first film and one here for the second. Now there was actually one other thing that I picked up in the Worlds of Wonder shop in Liverpool and it was this little die-cast set of the TARDIS and Dalek Sec uh, from circa, I don't know, 2007, 2008, something like that back in the day. Uh, you will of course have seen, if you've been watching these collection updates for a while, that I got the Cyberman and Dalek uh, two-pack from Forbidden Planet back in December, I think, or something like that, you know, towards the back end of last year. They had that one in one of my local Forbidden Planets, and they might still have them kicking about as well across the country. And they also had them in the Worlds of Wonder shop in Liverpool, and I saw them and kind of thought, okay, yeah, I've got that already. But then I saw this, and a really interesting thing happened, because uh, I saw this on, on the front of one of the rows. They have loads of rows of the, the Dalek and Cyberman pack from Sci-Fi Collector saw this on the front of one of the rows and thought, oh yeah, I, I might go and pick that up, maybe, complete the set. Then I, I took it away off the shelf, and behind it was a Dalek and Cyberman pack, and behind that was another Dalek and Cyberman pack, and etc, etc. So basically, this was the only Dalek second TARDIS pack that they had on sale there, and indeed on the, uh, the box of this two-pack, it actually had a, a label, a sticker, uh, which said Dalek and Cyberman, you know, die-cast two-pack. So I think this must have somehow ended up in a box of Dalek and Cyberman packs somehow, uh, which obviously has then recently been unearthed for the exhibition shop. Yeah, it's certainly something that I wasn't expecting uh, to find, and, and it's, it's a very uh, yeah, a very intriguing uh, intriguing thing that happened there with with there just being one of them in a box full of Dalek and Cybermen. So uh, yeah, any more information on these uh, would be much appreciated if you, if you have any. We also have a couple of other bits I picked up in Food and Plants International on that occasion. I got the uh, Doctor Who Chronicles issue as well. I saw these on, on the shelves and thought, yeah, I, I might as well get those. So we have, first of all, uh, this TARDIS pass holder. Indeed, the 13th Doctor's TARDIS with the exterior on the front and back. And then inside, uh, the interior, which is a lovely touch, actually. And uh, yeah, I use this to store things like my driving license and stuff. Um, obviously I've taken them out, I'm not going to show them off on YouTube, but yeah, it's a very handy little thing, you know, thinner than a wallet, it's just like a little, nice little pass holder, um, and, and very handy indeed, uh, so yeah, it's a nice little piece. We also have this coaster with the 13th Doctor's TARDIS on it, uh, which I picked up for similar reasons, really, because it was a couple of quid, and you know, 13th Doctor era merchandise is few and far between, so it's nice to have a few more bits and pieces, you know, from her era in the collection, you know, especially with, with the current era coming to a close. And it's also just nice to have a brand new coaster as well, because I've got loads of old battered coasters that I've either collected over the years or, or been gifted or whatever, so it's nice to have like a, a pristine uh, coaster with current era's TARDIS on it. Uh, so very nice, that and Taz Pass Holder. I think they are both available on the Forbidden Planet International website as well, uh, should you wish to buy them. Uh, but yeah, two very nice little pieces. And just like last month, we end this month with some more Battles in Time cards. So last month, after re-watching the first few episodes of Series 4, I was really psyched to complete my collection of Devastator, uh, the final set of Battles in Time, which is of course based around the episodes of Series 4. It's notoriously hard to get hold of, but it's also the one that I'm most nostalgic for out of all five sets because, you know, this was my first set. I got into the show with Series 4. It's a very nostalgic time for me. So, uh, yeah, last month, as you'll have seen, I basically got loads of, loads of cards at a bulk order of common cards that I was missing up to about card 1,000. And then this month, I had another bulk order of all the cards, you know, from 1,000 to the end that I was missing. Or the common cards, I should say, because, yeah, there are still some gaps for the, uh, the, the very rare super rares and, and ultra rares and stuff. I'll get around to them at another time. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd show, to, to end off this, uh, this month's collection updates, how these pages are looking now, because they were very, very empty uh, once upon a time. But now, uh, as you can see, 
they really are uh, filling up if, if not full already some of these pages are just missing one or two uh, cards I mean there we go lovely double spread there um, the penultimate spread there and then uh, the final page right that's the seller I got these cards from I'll link uh, link here in the description but yeah um, I mean let's let's end off on, on a shot of that spread there look at that a complete uh, double page spread of uh, of devastated battles in time which is just fantastic to see uh, such nostalgic time for me like i say i did also get a hold of a handful of other battles in time cards from the set annihilator uh, this month courtesy of both miles obviously a regular collaborator regular face on the channel and Pete Adamson, who you might remember from my BFI Revelation of the Daleks video. He was on my quiz team there and basically got in touch with me subsequently to, to say he's got some cards going spare and I was able to help him out with some in return. So basically, both Miles and Pete sent me two cards each, uh, two common cards from Annihilator. And they are tucked away in my Annihilator binder, which I won't bother getting out now because it's just not really practical, to be honest. Um, but yeah, that, that's coming along as well. So it's the whole Battles in Time collection. It is slowly getting there. I think I'm sort of, what, 50 odd cards away from having a full set now, which is absolutely mad. I certainly have uh, over a thousand of the like 1,075 cards that, that they did in, in the main sets. So it's becoming a real possibility that, that I might own a, a full set of these or a, a near full set, you know, maybe excluding like, Super Rose and the Adipose computer, uh, you know, sometime soon. So do stay tuned for future collection updates uh, where I'll update to you on how that progresses. So there we have it for another month. Everything added to my Doctor Who collection in June 2022. And what an array of items it is, you know, from, from a comic to audiobooks, uh, from a novelty coin to a novelty pen, a crinoid, a first doctor, postcards, die casts, uh, such an amazing array of stuff here, and I really hope you've enjoyed watching me talk through it all. As ever, links to anything that is still available online will be in the video description. And once again, a massive thanks to Mark, to Mestor, to Pete, and to Miles for their help in securing items featured in this month's update. Please do give this video a like if you have enjoyed it, and subscribe if you're new for more stuff like this in the future. And I'll see you again next month for July's collection updates. But until then, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye for now.